I never thought I would have found a parallel between a really compelling jazz solo and a game for babies. So here's what happened. I was thinking about what I was practicing tonight and how to share it with you and what to call it. And it involves doing one thing repetitively the same and then changing the other thing. Maybe it's because I have a 10 month old son. First thing that popped into my mind was the game peekaboo, you know, like peekaboo, peekaboo. Little babies love this. And the most amazing thing is they never get tired of it. They think it's hysterical every single time. I Googled peekaboo and the Wikipedia entry came up. So I'm reading this, you got You have to see this. Peekaboo uses the fundamental structure of all good jokes, surprise balanced with expectation. Now that idea, that concept of balancing surprise with predictability, think of the idea of telling a story in almost any form that you have a three act system and whether it's a play or a movie or a TV show, think about classical music for a second. You have this idea of ABA at least, sort of a exposition, the exposition of an idea, the development of that idea, and then the recapitulation of that idea, okay? So some, some theme is stated, that theme is developed, and then it is eventually returned to. And this arc is what gives us a sense of narrative as listeners, as viewers, okay? So when people say something like, what you wanna do with a, a jazz solo is tell a good story, or you know, oh yeah, you're, he's a good storyteller, what does that all mean? Well, this is a this is a pretty raw way of looking at it, but it's a it's a good starting point. My favorite jazz solos and, and, and musicians, they're able to weave solos together that are obviously spontaneous, but there's a narrative to them. So whether you're talking about Sonny Rollins, Pat Metheny, Joshua Redman, Stan Getz, Louis Armstrong, Sonny Stepp, one of the many things I'm drawn to besides incredible tones, unique sounds and, and uh, impeccable time feels and there's a lot of things, but the idea of telling a story in an improvised solo to me involves the presence of mind to, to be there for the moment and to not approach that moment with any preconceived notions of what you want to play, but then simultaneously to have the self-awareness and the presence of mind to sort of keep a running log of what you've played, the ability to structure a narrative out of that spontaneity. You're able to reference and comment on what you have previously improvised. So even in a small, in a, in a short solo of a chorus or two, there's this constant balance of stating something and either developing it or moving away from it, but then coming back to it and referencing it. Maybe you change it a little bit, but you, you reference it. That changes a solo from a random group of just all different ideas and things going up and down and moving over, just chaos basically. What it's lacking, the reason it doesn't make you feel excited, one of the many reasons, is this lack of a narrative structure to it. And it's a bit of a dichotomy because you're thinking, well, it's supposed to be spontaneous and blah, blah, blah. Yes, but so the narrative is formed out of that spontaneity, okay? You need simultaneously both parts. So here's where we get back to the, the baby game, peekaboo. What This little idea that I'm practicing, which I'll, I'll leave it in after this. What I'm doing is I'm playing an idea and then I'm moving away from that idea. And then I'm playing the same idea and moving away from it. But within a fixed loop, okay? So I play, a, I play something, well, you'll see after this, I play something. And then, I, and then I completely improvise. So I know exactly what I'm gonna play. So each time I come back to that thing, I can finesse it a little bit more. I can kind of, I can check in with it in different ways each time. Cause I, I can also like my, give my brain a quick rest. Okay, I don't know what this is gonna be. And I, and I have to, it's not that I tense up, but it's like, it's a different activity. And then I play this other part and I know what that's gonna be. So I can relax a little bit. And then I sort of jump off the cliff and then jump back to safety. Off the cliff, back to safety, off the cliff safety. It's also a fun way to practice because it keeps it interesting in, and each time I, I kind of get to reset and go around again. If I played something that I kind you know, I might play something totally random and surprise myself and then play the, the known entity again. And when I come back to my next sort of flash of improvising, I might choose to play that thing again and, and try to work it out better. But I'm practice, I'm literally practicing improvising in the moment, like locking in with the time, getting my groove together, but also, you know, dancing with the unknown. This is some crazy gibberish that I'm coming up with right now. I don't know, to me, it just reminded me of this idea of peekaboo. Like every time I do that for my son, or, you know, you do that with a baby, they think it's brand new every time, even though, you know, you're, you're doing the same thing, but you're changing something. Something changes each time. The way, the way that you smile, the way that your eyes open. So like every time you do this, yes, that's the same. And every time you open up, you might say something a little different. Your phrasing will be different. Uh, you'll enunciate different. The tone of your voice will be different. And the baby's gonna laugh. 
And just think of an audience like this, this balance of surprise and, and expectation. If it's all expectation, then it's going to be boring. If it's all a known quantity and it's repetitive, that's when you get what you think of as repetitive, boring music. And if it's all surprise with no repetition, it's too much to hold on to for a listener to be interesting. It's just you'll turn off. It becomes noise at that point because we're very good. We're, we're creatures of we love stories. So we will we search the world for stories. And if we don't find them, we do our best to make them up. They help us process the world and process everything. The way that relates to the music is if it's just sheer chaos and nothing is connected, eventually we'll tune out as listeners. We just we can't handle that. We're, there's a limit, okay? There's always this line that you're dealing with, and um, and I think the best the best ones, the best improvisers, are able to push that limit just enough without ever going to the edge. They know when to bring it back. They know how to push and pull the audience's attention span and um, and that balance between expectation and spontaneity, expectation and surprise. So with that, all of this I'm saying right now is happening after the practicing I'm about to show you right here. Look it up. 